Hello everyone, this is iSleep and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be going over the best loadouts you can run in multiplayer as of Season 2 2024. We'll be covering the best weapons along with builds, score streaks, equipment, and perks for both SD and respawns. Now, let us begin with the best secondary weapons you should be using, starting with the pistols. And we have two different options. Your choice between the two will largely depend on what primary weapon you're using. If you're using a close range weapon such as an SMG or a shotgun, then the 50GS is the go-to option, as it has high aim assist, along with the ability to consistently two-tap, which helps to make up for your primary's limited effective range. The high damage per shot also makes it very useful when you need to finish off a weakened enemy but don't quite have enough ammo in your primary to finish your job. But if your primary is more along the lines of an assault rifle, an LMG, or a sniper rifle, then you should use the L car instead as it does help to cover the close range where these weapons will typically lack. Obviously, being an SMG, you can't really expect it to beat actual SMGs, but it does, however, possess great mobility and a decent 4-shot time to kill. And just like the 50GS, it can also finish off weakened enemies due to its higher fire rate. If you're not a fan of pistols though, then you can always use the melee weapons instead, because why bother with bullets We can just beat your enemies into submission like in Yakuza? Having the best mobility out of any weapon in the game also means that you can traverse around the map much faster. The best option for this goes to the prize fires, due to its quiet swap to and quick one to punch, making it a perfect option for catching enemies off guard in close quarters. A good alternative would be the newly added spear, featuring a 3 hit swing instead at the cost of a slower hit wreck. If you plan on taking down score streaks, then the FHJ is your best bet. Not only does it provide one extra shot compared to the SMRS, it is also capable of locking on moving targets should you find that necessary. Just note that it is less effective at taking out players, but that doesn't mean that you cannot use it to turn them into a pile of human soup if you're accurate enough. Next, we have the Operator skills, which again, depends on your preference. The Purifier and Equalizers are close-range beasts that synergize well with Gung Ho. The Claw is a roided-up assault rifle that can easily take out enemies behind cover, and the Annihilator, an aimbot sniper that guarantees a one-hit kill. Now let's talk about our suggestions for throwable equipment. Starting off with the lethals, frags and sticky grenades are good for taking enemies out of positions from afar, while more aggressive players would prefer contact grenades for the quick and easy kills. There are also the main of high existence in ranked. C4 and Molotovs are better for respawns as they help to clear out areas, with Molotovs being more focused on area denial and C4s for quickly killing anyone around corners. Chip mines are more suited for SND where they are great for getting free kills in common entry routes, and they are also really annoying to play against. For tacticals, trophy systems are good for holding objectives as they help to prevent grenade spam, while flashbangs are better for entry players as they help to initiate fights. Stim shots can also be used for quickly resetting from fights. If you're playing SD, then chip sensors and heartbeat sensors would be great options as they help to gather info. There are also smoke grenades which are useful for blocking lines of sight, making crossing open areas, and doing the objective much safer. Anyway, we can finally get into the actual loadouts themselves, starting off with the SD loadouts. The first weapon we recommend is the HVK 30 with large caliber ammo. As many of you already know by this point, the HVK is the most lethal fully automatic AR in the game right now, due to its potential to 3 shot up close and never needing more than 5 shots to kill regardless of distance. It also has incredibly rewarding headshots that are especially strong in closer ranges, where you can do a tap if you land both shots to the dome. This combined with having decent mobility, good BSA and modular recoil means that it is basically the perfect gun in most situations. But there is a catch. The max size is very small at 28 rounds, which makes it quite hard to take on multiple opponents and you'll have to be a lot more careful with how you manage your ammo. The score streaks we recommend are the standard for every SD loadout, since you cannot get a high enough score for the larger score streaks. As for perks, we have Pinpoint for the extra aim assist, helping with accuracy, along with Ghost and Dead Silence to reduce the risk of getting detected. Next, we have the Growl 556, arguably the most widely used AR in the game as of now, featuring very low recoil, competitive time to kill, decent range, good initial BSA, and above average mobility for an AR, with little to no downside. The Growl may not be the best option in any particular category, but being able to have a little bit of everything at no cost means that it is the most versatile weapon in the game, while being one of the easiest to use. 
The build we recommend is the same as the one that was being used in Calm, primarily focused on boosting the range. The perks we recommend are similar for the most part, with the exception of Lightweight as the tier 1 perk for the faster repositioning. Alternatively, you could use Skulker for the faster strafe speed. As the best type rifle in the game, the Tundra makes a spot on this list. It quite literally has everything you can ask for in the snipe rifle and more. Excellent one-shot consistency, fast ADS time, very low flinch, and long breathful time. All this combined makes for a weapon that does everything every snipe rifle does but better, putting them out of business like ChatGPT to every programming student. Our build focuses on improving the handling while maxing out the wallbang consistency, allowing it to one-tap to the stomach even through heavy material. An alternative that you can use is the Locust with stopping power, which is still a great snipe rifle but compared to the Tundra, it doesn't ADS quite as fast and has way worse breath hold time and flinch, but it is still a great option if you don't want to use a blatantly busted snipe rifle like the Tundra. Just remember that you have to use toughness and iron lungs, since its stability is nowhere the same as the Tundra's. Now moving on to the respawn game modes. We also recommend the HPK-30 and the Growl, with the builds being exactly the same, but our choice of score streaks and perks are quite different. Predator Missile and Sajikon for keeping enemies off the objective, while the perks, Quick Fix for better survivability, and Hardline to make hitting score streaks even easier. If you find yourself constantly getting hit by flashbangs, survival training is another really good option. For close quarters weapons, we have the Switchblade X line. SMG with excellent time to kill, great mobility, fast handling, and low recoil. And unlike his brother, the QQ9, it features much faster reload times and better PSA, making it not only the more aggressive option but also the more versatile option. Our build is the same as past seasons, focusing on improving range and mobility. When it comes to score streaks, instead of the sentry gun, we have the shock RC, as it helps make playing aggressive much easier. And our red perk has been replaced by Skulker essentially acting as an additional light stock. The FedEx can serve as a great alternative to the Switchblade, boasting the second fastest firing in the entire game, along with the potential to kill in 162 milliseconds if you can land two chest shots. However, it is less versatile than the Switchblade, with its much higher recoil and flinch, making it harder to challenge gunfights outside of 10 meters. The build we recommend aims to mitigate certain issues while boosting range simultaneously. Next, we have two main ARs which perform very similarly, being the LK24 and the Kilo 141. Both of them are excellent options for mid to long range, but each of them have their own advantages. The LK24 is more focused for longer ranges, as it has less recoil and flinch, while also having the potential to fall short up to 25 meters with our recommended build. The Kilo, on the other hand, is more versatile, due to having a faster fire rate which directly translates to having a faster time to kill. It can also be built to handle faster than the LK. The builds for both of these guns focus on maximizing the range performance by boosting range, recoil, and accuracy. Our combination of score streaks include the care package, due to its potential to earn higher tier streaks at a low cost, along with the lightning strike and napalm for map control. Combining these with persistence should make them a piece of cake to earn in both of your games. Before we conclude, we have two honorable mentions, that being the SKS and the AS Val with the 15 round FMJ mag. The SKS is the more popular option due to its ability to achieve an extremely fast time to kill if you can land a 2 tap, along with the ability to 1 tap to the head at any range. It also has access to the disable perk, which makes landing shots much easier. The AS Val, on the other hand, is the more slept on option but arguably the better one in the currency of the game, where close to mid-range fights take place more often, featuring much faster mobility and handling than the SKS. It is basically an SMG, with the lethality and the precision of a DMR, since it also has much less recoil than the SKS. It also has much less flinch than the SKS, which means that you can take fights more aggressively and allows you to sacrifice toughness for another perk, like Quick Fix. And that covers all of our recommended loadouts for this season. Feel free to let us know in the comments if you have any other loadouts that you recommend. And if you found the video helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. This is Ice Steve, going dark.